Hello, my name is Zizel Slipovich, and I'm a musician in residence at Yale University's Fortune of Video Archive for Holocaust Testimonies. This video series is designed as a companion to our album Where is Our Homeland, which is the first volume in the archive's ongoing effort to present songs and poems performed by survivors in testimonies given to the Fortune of Archive over the last 40 years. You can learn more about the project on the archive's website, songsfromtestimonies.org. Where is Our Homeland? Songs from Testimonies Volume 1 was recorded in 2019 by the Zizel Slepovich Ensemble featuring renowned singer Sasha Luria, Craig Udelman on the violin, Joshua Camp on the accordion, keyboards and guitar, Dmitry Ishenko on the bass and myself on woodwinds. The songs in this collection differ vastly in terms of style, social and historical background, language and many other aspects, but collectively they create a multidimensional picture of Jewish life before and during World War II. Irene S. was born in 1925 in Berezhany, Obzezhany, Galicia, now Ukraine, and was raised in Grudziądz, Poland. She was a survivor of the Bialystok ghetto and several concentration camps, including Majdanek, Treblinka and Auschwitz. Irene was a slave laborer in Germany and was liberated by the American in Kaunitz. By the time the war broke out, Irene already was an accomplished singer and songwriter. In her testimony, she recalls singing existing songs and composing new ones together with her young fellow prisoners from Poland and the Soviet Union. The poem Sachki Sachki, otherwise known as Anima Amin, I believe, was written by the poet, translator, physician, and writer Shaul Chernichovsky in Odessa, Ukraine, then Russian Empire, in 1892. Chernichovsky was born in Ukraine to a modern religious family, studied languages in Odessa, where he became involved in Zionist activities. Chernichovsky served as a doctor in Russian army during World War I, and then, pursuing his dream, he repatriated or emigrated to the land of Israel, to the then Palestine, in 1931. I believe is one of Chernichovsky's very early poems, permeated by idealistic feelings. The young poet unites the ideals of liberty, fraternity, peace, and Zionist ideals, the Jewish people's hope and aspiration to freely live in their ancestral land, the land of Israel. It is really moving and symbolic how all these ideals strongly resonated with the feelings of the young inmates at the ghettos and camps, among which was Irene. The songs like this helped them survive and make it to the Liberation Day. He would not see the roar show effort if there was still freedom to my soul. Sachki, 
In her testimony, Irene recalls that while being transported from the Bialystok ghetto to an unknown destination, she and other young people in the cattle car began singing. They sang, as she says, patriotic songs, Zionist songs. We were singing ourselves to go to die, she says. One of these songs, whose melody she wrote herself, was in Russian, because, she says, the boy who wrote the words didn't know any Yiddish. They did not sing for long, because the guards on the train shouted to them to stop and fired into the cattle car, wounding Irene and killing one of the lads. The transport passed by the extermination camp Treblinka, and she remembers seeing vast fields covered with ashes and bones. But they went on to Lublin, and she subsequently was taken to the nearby concentration and extermination camp Majdanek. Yet Irene also remembers that the young men and women in the cattle car sang another song, and she beautifully sings a few verses of it. The song is known as Sachki Sachki, although its original name is, I believe, Anima Amin. Irene does not mention the name of the song and erroneously attributes it to Chaim Nachman Bialik. In fact, it is based on a poem written by Shaul Chernichovsky, another important Jewish Zionist poet from Ukraine, who, like Bialik, ended up living in Palestine. Chernichovsky was born in a small Ukrainian village in 1875 and wrote Sachki Sachki in 1894, when he was merely 19 years old. At the time, he was living in Odessa and already knew both Russian and Hebrew. He subsequently also learned German, English and French, as well as ancient Greek and Latin. A man of great talent and energy, he studied medicine at the universities of Heidelberg, Lausanne and Kiev. While studying at Heidelberg, Chernichovsky also married the anarchist Russian aristocrat Melania Karlovna, a Christian of Polish, German and Ukrainian descent. The marriage lasted until his death in 1943. Chernichovsky served as a military doctor in the Russian army in World War I and immigrated with his wife and daughter to Palestine in 1931. He spent the last years of his life having contracted leukemia in the Greek Patriarch's residence in San Simon in Jerusalem, along with his wife, who had become a devout Orthodox Christian. Chernichovsky is remembered as one of the most influential poets of his generation, and his works betray the influence of his Jewish heritage, his love for biblical figures, and the impact of world literature. Sarki Sarki, which was included in Chernichovsky's first poetry collection, published in 1898, combines a youthful belief in humanism, socialism, the fraternity of nations, friendship, and Zionism. It was very popular among the Zionist socialist youth of Irene's generation, and it is no wonder that she and her friends sang it in that transport to hell. My own mother, who was just a year older than Irene, also loved that poem, and I still recall her singing it in my childhood. But the song has remained very popular, not least in Israel, and it is still sung in youth movements, public events, and social gatherings, and has been performed by an array of popular singers. There are several other interesting twists to the story of Sarki Sarki, whose original title, Anima Amin, refers to a pronouncement in the Jewish prayer book, Sidur, based on the writings of Maimonides, which expresses the 13 main principles of Jewish faith. The words of Anima Amin were made into a popular Hasidic tune. The well-known cantor, Azriel Fastag, is said to have sung this Hasidic tune on the train to Treblinka, where he was murdered. 
But unlike this Hasidic tune, the melody of Sachki Sachki sounds distinctly Russian. Officially, the composer of this song is said to have been Tuvia Shlonsky, a Zionist from a Hasidic family in Ukraine, and the father of the influential Hebrew poet, editor, and translator Avraham Shlonsky, one of my own father's early mentors when he began his own literary career. It is, however, quite likely that the tune of Sachki Sachki originated in a Russian folk song from the Don region. One indication of that is that the very same melody was used for another song written by Rabbi Avraham Eliyahu Kaplan, a major Orthodox figure from Lithuania, which he wrote as a 17-year-old lad. The song, which expresses the spiritual torments of a young soul and its longing for God, is officially titled Prayer, Tfilah, but it is known and sung to this day under the name The Sun Has Set, Shakachama. Since it is unlikely that Rabbi Kaplan also wrote the tune, we can assume that it was put to music using the same popular Russian tune that was used for Sarki Sarki, a Russian song that served to animate both a Hasidic longing for God and a Zionist socialist longing for equality, fraternity, and a new Jewish generation in Eretz Israel. One can find the beautiful performance of The Sun Has Set by the Hasidic singer Abish Brot on YouTube. The popularity of Sachki Sachki in Israel to this day found another remarkable expression in 2004 during a discussion in the Israeli Knesset on the collective rights of, Ar of the Arab population in Israel. At one point in the lengthy debate, the Arab member of Knesset, Muhammad Barake, proposed that Chernichovsky's Sachki Sachki would be a more appropriate national anthem than the current one, which speaks primarily about the longing of Jews to Zion. The proposal was rejected, but it is a tantalizing idea. Perhaps one day, Chernichovsky's verse, For my soul still longs for freedom, I have not sold it to the golden calf, for I have still faith in humanity and in its spirit, fierce and bold, sung by Jewish youths on the way to Treblinka, will still become the national anthem of both Jews and Palestinians in the state of Israel.